Today we'll see new content for Akkoyunlu, Karakoyunlu, many new missions and paths coming for them, how they come for Persia, absolutely new content for Georgia, which is supposed to be not too easy, and finally, content for Armenia, which will lead you to form the greater Armenia with the new ideas. You better fasten your seatbelts because this week we have another great dev diary, same as we did last week for Byzantium. So pretty much seeing two dev diaries in one today. First dev diary about the Kuyunlus, so black and white sheep, and second dev diary about mentioned Georgia and Armenia. Based on what they are saying here, both Kuyunlus, so Ak and Kara, are having a big chunk of the mission tree that is the same from both, but they both have a separate branch only specific for Akkoyunlu and Karakoyunlu. We're starting with content for Akkoyunlu, so even though it's smaller and bordering Ottomans, so even in death, it's supposed to be a bit more stable than Karakoyunlu, as it's having less internal troubles. So we've got 31 missions for AQ, which is a really decent amount, it's not 55 from Byzantium, but it's a smaller country, so far to one is really nice. First part of the mission tree is around uh, killing his Kaifa, so the last remnant of the Ayubid Empire, and creating a powerful cavalry. For that, we received 30 tribal legends, as well as for 20 years, manpower recovery speed and promise horse cocos, as well as plenty of perma claims. After killing Trebzond, we receive more of the permanent claims, but also the event Fate of Trebzond, which allows us to change the culture of a religion there to your own. Of course, on the cost of some mana and rebels, but it's absolutely worth it. And if we don't want to do that, the other option will grant us the prosperity there over time, as well as reduction to local autonomy and other minor rewards. The next part of our expansion is restoring the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, which we of course have to conquer, some explanation of what it was historically in the 8th and 9th centuries, and once we restore it, we'll get 25 mysticism, idea cost for 10 years and monthly piety accelerator. I assume when we expand into Anatolia, we can get the Gunpowder Empire, which gives us 10% professions, lovely, 20% artillery cost for 20 years and 10% land fire damage as well as significantly cheaper advisor. I love it, especially that we are not just granting left and right permanent bonuses to the military and the other stuff, but rather temporary bonuses, just like here, for 20 years to use it immediately or leave that bonus for a specific point of the game when you will really need it against a bigger enemy or for a multiplayer war why 75% cheaper advisor is oh, lovely. Let's move to the internal part of the content, as few have the patronized uh, arts and literature, which is gonna give us another temporary bonus for tech cost and institution spread, and another 75% cheaper advisor, why Splendid Court uh, will give us a high triples the chance of well-connected, which is 20% advisor cost, <laughs> many advisor cost bonuses, and 20 years of a bonus from possible advisors and cost of advice of the rules region. You're <laughs> pretty much getting advisors for free in Akkoyunlu. Imperial Fabrics is death cost and goods process modifier. And while this modifier is active, deving cloth and silk provinces gets a 20% chance of gaining one additional development. Lovely. And if we complete this mission while having at least a hundred development in the wood provinces, three round of wood provinces will become cloth provinces. You know, wool is here. Cloth is here regarding the price. Pearl of the Empire is developed in Tabris. Oh, 50% goods produce modifier in Tabris, possible number of manufacturers. And if it's the highest developed Muslim province in the world, you get also 300 splendor. Some other highlights before we move to the Karakunlu. Legacy of Seljuk gives us bonuses to Persia and Khorasan. I assume we have to just conquer them, maybe something extra. Death cost and construction cost, 20% construction cost. Why the August homeland gives us access to tribes' estates. So you're gonna play with five estates, right? Because you have nobility, you have the merchant guilds, you have the clergy, that's free. Then you have Dimi, and fifth would be tribes, right? Five estates, very nice. And at the end of the game, you get calf to inflation, calf shock point 25. Very lovely, allows you to play calf only, 
and uh, 0.25 calf shock is really decent, but it's not broken. Let's move to Kalako Yuno. Here, as they are saying, it's a much more troubling moment in the history of this uh, country, where uh, capital that is on the north, Tabriz, is not much connected to the lands in today's uh, Iraq. And because of that, this land is very autonomous, it's having many troubles with rebels, etc. So apparently starting with emirs of Baghdad, East stage privileges that is increasing the autonomy in this provinces. And it can be taken off, obviously, for a mission, which also gives us some additional clay. Requirement? Well, you either get 40% crown land or abolish... Ah, so you can abolish either for a mission or for an event. Event for the other requirements is high loyalty of emirs and uh, plenty of previous promises or two agendas completed. It's good that you don't have just, you have to do this, but you have actual choice how you want to complete it. Getting rid of this privilege will be raised against time as the autonomy of the promises after that will be difficult to lower. Well, it's always manageable. Against the threat of the Ottomans to the west, not losing a single battle against this first enemy will yield a powerful paramount reward. So probably, by defeating them, you're getting Turkish as an accepted culture and years of separatism accepted the cultures as long as Turkish is accepted. You get permanent claims on Horok Anatolia and as mentioned, if you do not lose a single battle against them, so you have to be very cautious to only get your wanky killed, you're getting 10 power projection permanently. And the complete defeat of the Ottomans can get us 10 Janissaries, reform progress growth and a unique government type that allows you to steal an idea of Pashas and Janissaries from the Ottomans. And I actually love the idea of it. You probably don't have the Janissaries estate, so it's just not as powerful as it is for the Ottomans, but you also don't have decadence. Here it's a bit of path of expansion, uh, which is a bit into the Ottomans, of course, as we just said, but it's mainly focused on Persia. So you can get more of armies to take care of them, plenty of claims, admin mana, army tradition from battles, and we have 10% chance of stealing 2,000 men per battle right against the Timurids. Of course, 10% is not much, but manpower is manpower, especially in the early game. Plenty of Parma claims on the whole Persia region and some additional areas. And if you complete this mission, while you're supporting independence of one of the Timurid subjects, we're getting additional relation slot. And I guess expansion impact. And we've got a mission around the a Blue Mosque in Tabriz, also known as Masjid e Kabut, I hope I'm saying this correctly, which was actually created in the 15th century. And uh, how this mission works, it, uh, you uh, probably have to develop the province and build a mosque, that's my assumption. In exchange, you're getting uh, improvement to a great mosque and 35% death cost in this province for another 20 years. While building mosques, I assume the whole country, now grants minus one local address. I love it. And we have some more content around both of the countries. So we've got possibility to form Persia. And as they are going to say a bit lower in the dev diary, they did it on purpose knowing that some of players will want the bonuses and go for the mission tree, but they do not want to form Persia. So that's why it unlocks a decision to form Persia, you don't have to form it. The government changes to empire, rulers will be Shahanshah, a true Korean because of the new primary culture, which is combining Azerbaijani, Turkish and Turkmeni cultures, and so you're also getting deeper imperial legitimacy. Now we've got Maragek Observatory, which is innovativeness gain, um, get a free university a bit early, possible buildings, and Comet site is not firing. This is it for the first part of the Dev Diary, let's move to Georgia and Armenia. So what we've got here? Well, Georgia is a state in a big a month of issues in 1444. That's why they are aiming to make your experience a bit painful, but also with bigger gains. This is how the mission tree looks. It's another decent amount. And let's see what is a troubled realm. Well, this is all about the Georgian crisis disaster. That is, you're not starting with it. It's slowly increasing early on, and there can be two paths you can take. You either go for this disaster, or you try preventing this disaster from happening. And let's see how this can happen. Oh yeah, yeah. before we join there, you see that Georgia actually starts a bit more united with Emirati provinces in their hands, as well as Samska starting their vassal. Yeah, this is the looming disaster. These are the requirements that are increasing speed of it happening. So not completing a mission, you have to complete it. 
having no air, having little legitimacy and high nobility influence. So you have to probably go for the mission, get an air, get a high legitimacy and avoid high influence of nobility, which is not going to be easy with the event that they showed a bit here. 20 nobility influence and minus 20 legitimacy that you get early on. Yeah, the disaster is not hurting that much. I think the national honors modifier could be higher. So yeah, these are the requirements. Not that bad, but of course it costs you early resources. The content of Georgia is designed in a way to facilitate game flow, either via overcoming this single disaster or by completing certain missions with a reasonable time frame. Yeah, so we've got a claim of strength. I assume once you get air, you're getting these bonuses. Once you get a high legitimacy, I assume we can get these bonuses. If you complete this mission uh, while you have an annexed subject modifier, it will be removed. Otherwise, we get diplo points. Powerful nobles will be removed from judges. I assume this is getting other missions before, but also keeping the nobles not much influence. If you do it by avoiding the disaster, we will get yearly tax for 15 years and global prosperity growth plus one. That is massive. It usually was 0.25 from other modifiers. And if we complete it by avoiding the disaster, we get 20% stamp cost. So let's see the disaster because it's actually a bit more hurting than I thought because at the start you get minus four stability and plenty of rebels. Remember, you probably have like 10 force limit starting. So dealing with 25,000 pretender rebels might not be easy unless this pretender is having 666 stats and he just want to embrace them oh yeah the disaster is hurting because it's uh, uh, making samska independent and starting a reconquest war but if it's a reconquest it means you have cores so you can anyway take them for little ae and just integrate them without waiting 10 years same with emerity so it, it might be theoretically worth to go for the disaster but I don't know, because if you have cores, it means you can annex them after 10 years. Once you finish the disaster, you only get one stability. Very little compared to how much you lose, but I assume it, it's supposed to hurt. Conquest missions are about unification of Caucasia and going to the Middle East. Uh, bring the region back to the rule of the cross. So what are we getting here? Uh, 100 admin mana, gates of the Alexander. Uh, manpower recovery, speed, maintenance. And some uh, perma claims, and if you complete it by having at least two subjects, diploma annexation costs 20%. Lovely. Conquest of Armenia, I assume, gaining Armenia's accepted culture, and as long as it's accepted, you're getting max promoted cultures plus one, so you're getting them accepted for free. And empowering the accepted culture promises, I love it, and 75% cheaper advisor. If you complete the mission, the envoy to Tsar, so we can even I uh, the Tsar, which gives us 20k. 20k strolls is a lot early on and diplo relations and if you do it by rival in Moscow you're getting restoration of castles by in Moscow for 25 years I mean it's a bit unbalanced between these two right because restoration of union is huge of course you have to defeat Moscow and you have to keep them loyal but it's huge oh boy yeah I mean We've got plenty of patient trees of PO CB, so I guess it's fine. We're doing something on the Mamluks, I again assume defeating them. Has me points promise war score cost. Permanent cast spell against Ibrut, Herons and Herix for 20 years. Lovely. Plenty of uh, permanent claims, mainly of course promises from the Mamluks. If you complete it, why we are defend of faith also. 3k additional manpower. One of the highlights of your conquest missions is the Throne of the Romans missions, allowing you to make yourself the rightful heir of the Eastern Roman Empire by moving the capital to Constantinople. So what is giving? Changes the naming uh, to Greek in Anatolia, moves our culture to be part of the Byzantine culture group, unlocks the decision to move capital to Constantinople, and until the end of the game you're getting to answer the true faith, yearly legitimacy and plenty of additional perma claims on a bit western terrains. Then we've got internal missions, uh, which is about restoring the country's uh, prosperity and revival. So we've got rebuildability, 100 prosperity in the states of the capital, 35% death cost for 50 years. Support for Renaissance if you don't have it. Every province which fulfills the requirement will receive a one bonus to development of Diplo, unrest, local goods produce bonifier, and building manufacturers in wine provinces will give us one additional Diplo bonus. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe 
something even more OP would be plus one flat good Pros modifier. So you get one from manufacture and another one from this bonus instead of you know additional development. Uh, but additional development is also cool. Triples the chances of our rulers being architecture visionary, 10% construction cost. All promises in our uh, main regions, I mean this is our like home regions, will get a uh, possible number of buildings. A patch ahead of Georgia will give us consecrated metropolitan gives 10% local death cost. Is it perma? Or is it same as here for this bonus of 20 years? Is it, if it's perma, it's really nice. So here, depending on which icon you're using, you can get military bonus, stability bonus, death cost, construction cost bonus, expansion bonus, or institution bonus. I have some historical flavor like uh, events for the Sakadze, which is a general and other stuff. Let's move to Armenia now. And by Armenia, there's no like Armenia attack in 1444. It's all about Karabakh. Karabakh is arguably one of the most difficult attacks in the game. The goal of the mission tree is to give them a flavorful and powerful tree without trivializing the difficulty of the early game. So same as we've seen for Ardabil, I believe, where we're not making it easier, start, but once you start succeeding, you are getting bonuses out of it. This is the mission tree, so this is all. It's a bit smaller even than uh, Georgian one, but it's still new content. Let's take a look at some of the conquest related highlights of the new content of Armenia and Karabakh. So liberation of our the homeland gives us uh, mil points to the ruler, more of armies and recover army morale speed until the death of the ruler, course on all unowned provinces of Armenian culture, and some perma claims. Overthrowing the Turkmen will give us discover of the Persia region, minus 15 against expansion of all neighbor countries, Plus 15 shock damage for 15 years and even more perma claims. The Church of the East changes region Baghdad to our region, so Coptic. Baghdad will become the Coptic center of conversion. Ooh, for 30 years. That's lovely. I love that they started adding some new centers of conversion outside of, you know, Protestant countries. Heritage of the Artaxiats gives us prestige, as well as for 20 years. 20% cooperation cost. It's perma claims on Persia. So the conquest missions will focus on restoring the borders of Great Armenia, but also venture into Persia, Mashrik, Anatolia, Egypt, and even Ethiopia. We will be joining the churches of the East and gaining powerful rewards such as the Coptic Center of Conversion in Baghdad, which you just mentioned, the development of faith position as a mission reward, an upgrade of the holy city of Jerusalem Great Project, and access to the Kava regiments. Coptic Restoration, 20 cover regiments and tier 5 guarantee form that we really know already well from Ethiopia. This is how the Great Armenia looks like and the terrains that they meant us to conquer and of course discover Persia. And Rebirth of the Great Armenia gives us 10 power protection that is permanent, a change of the name to Great Armenia. And our national ideas will be empowered. So let's see what are these empowered national ideas are. War exhaustion, recover army moral speed. Descent, hostile attrition, lovely. Global mission arc strength 2%, prestige per development from conversion. That's nice, so something that we know from Age of Reformation. 15% development cost. This is a very rare to be more than 10%. Diplomatic reputation, tax meta, global regiment cost, army tradition, production efficiency, and empowering the own culture provinces. These are really nice, but they lack any quality military modifier. I mean, there are some semi-quality modifiers like army tradition, right, or hostile attrition, but something that gives you at least a bit of quality would be very useful. Otherwise, it's, it might be tough, especially in the multiplayer, to form Greater Armenia. There's some new government reforms that you're getting from the missions, and we move to the tall missions. So, DR Kebir gets the great city of Tiagranes, Local death cost again 35%. Trade value plus 10. I love it. Unlocks addition allowing us to move our capital to yeah, this promise. The National Awakening gives us 50 government reform progress, 20 culture conversion costs for 20 years, and cost of advisors culture. And if you complete these missions, why our capital has at least 20 development, we can upgrade local trade center of trade. 
If the sentry is already level 3, you gain free development zone. You just spend 200 to get to level 2 and then get level 3 for free. Resettle of the ancestral lands gives us converting promises with to Armenian culture. Now gives one local tax, production, manpower development, and you get culture conversion costs at the end of the game. Oh boy. That's nice. I might do a campaign converting everything to uh, Armenian and doing a super tour Armenian campaign. Because it's free development for converting. So if you stack many modifiers for culture and conversion cost, and let's say you convert for 10 points, you can make it cheaper. But let's say you convert for 10 points per province, you just spend 10 mana to gain free development. It's like you're diving for 3 points per dev click. And then a bonus to all the Coptic nations for 25 years. Really nice. And if you complete this mission while we are directly on all Coptic holy sites, this will be permanent. Okay, so we have military modifiers here, but it's really tough as pushing in multiplayer. Finally, of course, Father Loris is having a comic shipbuilding time. Oh, yeah, that's what I was presenting last week. <gasps> okay, I'll just play as Georgia. This is it for today. Next week, we are gonna see a dev die around Yemen and Arabia. Many of you requested Arabia, so let's hope that it's gonna be magnificent. So guys, if you did enjoy this video, remember to leave a like on it, and of course subscribe to the channel to get notified about the future content. Bye!